Hello, in this video I'm going to be shifting gears a little bit and looking at a new use for the dot product. And uh, we're going to be using the dot product to be producing something called covariance and tor correlation matrices. And um, I'll be talking more about what those are. Um, first, big picture, how have we used the dot product so far? Uh, we've mostly been using it to multiply matrices by uh, vectors. And when we're multiplying a matrix by a vector on the right, um, there's two ways we can look at it. Um, one perspective, maybe called the row picture, is that we treat the, the vector um, as a collection of coefficients, and we can multiply those coefficients on all the values in, in the row in each row of the matrix. Right? So we can go row by row, multiply each row by the coefficients, and then get this vertical vector of outputs. Um, another equivalent perspective that we've seen is that um, multiplying a matrix by a, fact, a vector means that we're taking a linear combination of, of the columns, right? The values in that vector can tell us, you know, how many of column one do we want, plus how many of column two, plus how many of column three. Now, I'm going to show another use case in this video, which will be multiplying uh, two matrices uh, together. And uh, I'm not going to get into the actual math of defining what happens when we do this. We're just going to let NumPy do it for us. And I'm not going to be doing it uh, in general. I'm just going to be multiplying the transpose of a matrix by itself. When I multiply the transpose of a matrix by the matrix itself, we're going to end up with this nice square uh, table that describes the relationships between um, between every pair of columns, right? And there's different relationships depending on how we kind of reprocess the data. Um, so to set this up, I wanted to create a table with some really strong, obvious relationships between between the columns. And so what I'm imagining is that we have a bunch of rectangles in the world. And I don't care what those rectangles represent. Maybe they're tables, or maybe they're um, you know, property lots, right? And uh, whatever, there's a bunch of tables in the world, or rectangles. And <clears throat> we have a bunch of measurements of each rectangle. Um, if you're measuring a rectangle, maybe the obvious things to measure are what is the width and height of it, right? So I have W for width, H for height. And I'm imagining that those measurements are in inches, and I'm just randomly generating that data. Now, let's say we have a pretty redundant data set and somebody else comes along and they make the same measurements, but they're, now they're measuring in centimeters, right? So they want the width in centimeters, right, in centimeters. Now, hopefully, right, if they're doing a reasonably good job, uh, they're going to get the same measure times 2.54 because there's 2.54 centimeters uh, per inch, right? So they're going to get that. There's some redundancy there. The other maybe less kind of obvious redundancy is maybe somebody wants to measure the circumference or border of the rectangle. And so what are they doing then? They're kind of measuring uh, the, the horizontal dimension twice for the two sides and then the horizontal dimension twice for the other two sides, right? And so there's some redundancy here, right? I mean, if I know these two, um, I should be able to compute these other three things, right? The very obvious relationship. Usually, right, when we have a data set, there might be relationships like that, uh, but they're not as obvious, right? And we have to do some analysis to discover um, discover these re relationships. And so to make this more interesting, I've added some noise to all these measurements, right? So this is not exactly 2.54 times this other column. There's some noise there, right? Because maybe these two people measuring, uh, you know, each had some error in their measurements, all error. Okay, so I said get some sort of data frame like this and um, I have all these columns. We know what the relationships are between these columns, but now let's pretend we don't and see if we can rediscover these uh, via analysis, okay? So I want to figure out what is the relationship between these. And, um, and so like I said, we can figure this out by taking the dot product of um, the transpose of a matrix and the matrix, right? So I do that and I, I get this array here. And the first thing I'm going to be trying to work towards is a covariance matrix. And, um, and, uh, and so, well, let's see what the general form of this is going to look like at the end. Right, so I want to have this covariance matrix. This is not, uh, not done yet. So don't, don't be taking too close of notes, right? We're going to be working towards the covariance matrix. But um, what I'll often want to do to make it a little easier to visualize is I'll want to throw it in a data frame like so. <clears throat> um, that's a little easier to visualize. Um, and more importantly, I can put the, the labels on each row and each column. <clears throat> so the columns of this nice covariance matrix I'm producing 
are going to be the same as the ones in my original uh, data frame, right? And um, what's maybe more interesting is that along the rows, those are also going to be the same as the columns in the original, right? So the columns in the original are going along both, both dimensions. And what this is going to let us do is we're going to be able to look up a number, and that number is going to tell us something about the relationship between uh, this column and this other column, right? It's very common that we're taking columns in the original thing and then kind of putting those columns along both dimensions. Okay, so this is not, not a covariance matrix yet. Is there some pre-processing we need to do, okay? Um, one of the things we need to do is we need to, um, uh, you know, center the data, or, or people might say zero the data. Um, what, what I mean by that is that the, the columns I'm working with, right, so this is kind of summing up where the columns, I'd like each column to average out to zero, okay? And so uh, how, how am I going to do that? Well, I can do something like this. I could say data frame minus data frame dot mean. And, and what does this mean? This means here that this value, first value, is 19.7 inches less than the average, which I guess was this, right? This, this value here means that it was 7.29 inches above the average, and the average was this, right? So if I can do this, right? I kind of center the data, right? It's not this original numbers, but um, it still has the same distribution, right? But now it's centered at zero of elsewhere. So maybe what people commonly do is they might put that in a data frame called something like data frame zero, zero dot head, I look at that. <coughs> and when you're doing these covariance calculations, you have to do that on your zero matrix, right? So I'm going to put zero here in all the places, like so. And, um, and so that's good. And um, the other thing that we have to do is we have to normalize in some way. We have to divide our matrix by how many rows there are in our data set. So I'm going to divide by um, uh, how many rows are there, or however many there were in, uh, in the original data frame. So I'm going to do that. And um, this is almost a correlation matrix, or covariance matrix, excuse me. Um, covariance is trying measuring, uh, if I'm looking at two variables, how much they vary together or differently. Now, um, if you just have one row of data in your original data set, you can't really be uh, computing um, covariance, right? I mean, what does that even mean? I only have one uh, piece of data, right? I can't really study something like variance unless I have multiple um, samples. And, and so really, we don't really get any credit for variance coming from the first sample. And, and I'm not trying to talk about that further, but um, if you've probably seen this before if you're in a stats class, and instead of dividing by the length of the data frame, uh, we'll divide uh, by the length minus one. And, um, and of course, if it's a very large data frame, I have lots of rows, it doesn't really matter that I'm doing this, right? So don't, don't worry about that too much. Um, you'll, you'll learn more about that in a stats course, but I'm not trying to spend time on it. We do that. And, um, and here I actually have a covariance matrix. <coughs> and, um, and maybe I'm just trying to, uh, trying to do it like this. I'm going to print it off at the end. Um, it's also possible if I wanted to, right, I could have directly just said covariance, right? And this should be the same thing. I wonder, I wonder if I can actually just check that's the same thing. If I say something like assert covariance equals this. It looked like they were kind of similar. Now this assertion will actually fail. It's kind of a natural thing um, you might want to do. Uh, actually, that wasn't quite how I imagined it would fail. Let me let me just look at both of these again, right? So if I look at data frame dot covariance, um, that should look a lot like this covariance matrix I have. Um, okay. Well, anyway, the right way that we want to check that these matrices are similar, or we want to say something like this. We want to say I'm just surprised that that didn't work. Let me try one more time. That was data frame dot covariance. Was how, how was that? Oh, you know why? Is I can't do an assert because it's doing it element wise. So the way you can kind of make sure that these are similar, right? Here, here we can see not all the cells are exactly similar, uh, but what we can do is we can say numpy dot all close. And what all close does is it tells us if all the values in this one are kind of close to the values in this one in the same position, right? I can see that's true. And so maybe I'm just going to put an assert here to show, hey, this um, calculation I'm doing uh, ends up being the same as uh, the covariance for a data frame. Okay, 
So let's actually look at this. So we have some numbers here. Um, larger numbers means that uh, these tend to trend together. They both get big at the same time, both small at the same time. Uh, numbers closer to zero means there's not a lot of uh, a kind of relationship between these. Uh, negative numbers means that they tend to go in opposite directions. Now it's not uh, it's not a little bit it's a little hard to see what's going on here, right? Unless we normalize the data in some way, and uh, a good way to normalize it is with a correlation matrix. And a correlation matrix is very similar um, to what we had uh, before, um, except what we're going to have to do is change how we compute compute this one, right? So let me head down here and take a look at that. Um, with a correlation matrix, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be scaling uh, the data. Right? We're going to be standardizing it uh, by dividing it by the standard deviation of each row, right? So the way I can do that is pretty simple. I just divide by, well, let me just show you what this looks like first. I can have all these standard deviations here, and I can divide each row by that, like so. I'm going to divide that by the standard deviation. And, and then when I do that, I mean, I should just get rid of this now. When I do it that way, then instead of getting a covariance matrix, I'm going to get a correlation matrix. All right, so maybe let me just update this here, correlation matrix, right? And um, oh, correlation, let me leave that there for now. I get this nice correlation matrix. And the beauty of this is that now um, I'm going to get values between negative one and one. And um, you know every column is perfectly correlated with itself, so we're going to have ones in those positions. Um, I can see that, uh, so you can see along the diagonal, right? I'm doing all ones, right? Everything is perfectly correlated with itself. Um, before, before when I was doing this one, what were all these numbers? Um, the covariance of the column with itself is actually just the variance of that column, right? So before I was getting a bunch of variances uh, of the columns, so I was trying to have useful information on the diagonal. But the correlation matrix, um, not so useful, right? Because I know it's always going to be one. But these other numbers are all easier to read. Um, for example, I can see this one is almost one, which means that the measurement in inches is extremely closely correlated with the measurement in centimeters um, as it should be, right? Um, I can also look at this border, right? What does the border correlate well with? Uh, the border is very correlated uh, with both the width and the height, and, and that's true whether it's in uh, centimeters or inches, right? So I can see that this is a pretty meaningful thing. Now, it turns out that I can also compute the same thing by directly just saying data frame dot correlation like so, and that's going to be the same result. And let me just prove that right? data frame dot correlation uh, should be very close to correlation matrix I just produced. And indeed it is because I'm not getting an assertion uh, failure. Okay, so we can see this. Um, what we're going to be doing next time is we're going to be looking at how we can automatically pull out interesting information um, to describe this correlation matrix.